Art history makes the art, and we're the conduit. A lot of the thing that I'm dealing with is the fact that I know that many of the greatest gestures of art history have been done. But I know it, and I love it, and I admire it, and I'm pointing towards it with my work. And if it's valuable, that's all good. If it's not, then I will have been of no value, or you know, the works that I make of, will have been of no value. But uh, who makes the work, I think, is this grand collective. A grand collective is not just myself and Gordon. It's a grand collective of myself and he and all of history. We're, we're having a um, tango, a tango with art history. And, uh, you know, it certainly takes two to tango. Right? The whole gamut of Canadian and, and international artists. Marcel Duchamp, Rose Elevy, and BC Binning, Joyce Whelan. Recollection of Yves Klein, fantastic um, quasi-dadaist artist. That looks like a Joan Mitchell painting. Rhea Pell or Harold Town or Edwin Church. That's all we get, as Chris Pratt says, on this earth. Californian artist, Ed Ruscha, York Wilson, you know, Barnett Newman, and the group of seven. The Luminous Painters of America, Ad Reinhardt. You want to uh, show honor and respect to those people by turning up and doing something well. Are you, are you insane? You're insane. That can't work. And you go, well, why can't it work? So we're looking at the exhibition called Ghosts and Angels here at Art Gallery of Swift Current, uh, showing at the gallery for uh, November and December of 2015. Uh, it's a, a, a collaborative project between artist uh, Jeffrey Spaulding and printmaker Gordon Novak. And uh, they've uh, been working on this project for quite a few years, uh, but uh, intensified uh, about a year ago uh, when, uh, when Jeffrey Spaulding was able to come to work at Gordon Novak's uh, printmaking studio in Admiral, Saskatchewan, and worked there for about six months on a variety of art making projects. This uh, group of print works are uh, silkscreen monotypes uh, in nature. They don't really function like, uh, like we're, we're used to in terms of silkscreen or serigraph printmaking process, which uh, traditionally is about making a, a series of uh, prints that uh, function identically. Uh, they're made uh, to perfectly match each other and, uh, and they, uh, they are considered, each and every one of them, to be original artworks because they, they exact the artist's idea in the original condition. Uh, Gordon, the printmaker, and working with Jeffrey, uh, together they devised a, a process that of, uh, of uh, art making that would kind of take uh, the artist's decision making out of the uh, process. And applying this to the, the, to the silkscreen printmaking process was, was very unusual. But it actually kind of needed uh, this form in order to have the result that they've gotten. The show that we're going to be presenting is Ghosts and Angels. And it's something I'm very excited about. Uh, as this collaboration, and it could not conceivably happen without me, without Gordon. There's like no way. I mean, it is a collaboration, and otherwise it just doesn't occur. And the idea, uh, I bet you he would be really annoyed when I tell him this, but the, the point of the matter is that, like, printmakers are insane. They're just totally insane. They make these incredibly fabulous things, but they're so anal retentive in general, that they make a slight mistake, slight, slight, slight mistake, or something occurs, and they can't use it. The image is otherwise utterly sensational, wonderful, extraordinary, but in reality, it's flawed. And as, <laughs> as a consequence, it can't be authorized, it can't be shown. So well, that's a reality. So get over it, rip it up, burn it, throw it away, whatever. No printmakers do that, and certainly Gordon doesn't do that. So he has like this just, gosh, unbelievable mountain of things that are orphans. 
these wonderful things that all pertain to all this fabulous effort that can never be seen. Throw it away. Won't do it. So it just sits there. And so I look at it and go, there must be some way to re retrieve this value. Whereas all this incredible activity, this wonderful love and, and attention put into these things, if you're not gonna throw them away, let's do something with it. So with Ghosts and the Angels, essentially what I've been aware of is that since they're all sitting around there, and Gordon is an extraordinary printmaker who works with outstanding artists the worldwide and is content continually doing things. Um, I decided uh, that I might ask to conceivably what we would do is take this stock of spoiled orphans that can't be shown and use them as the starting point. Every time he makes another print to make another impression on top of it. And so it becomes, in a cumulative sense, over 20, 30, 40 prints, a rich repository of complicated layers of previous aspirations. And you have no idea how it's gonna turn out. This is Yves Gaucher. Ah. One of the greatest artists of our time, Yves Gaucher from Quebec. Wonderful, wonderful geometric artist. <laughs> and I wonder if he would be offended because he's now passed. I, I don't think he would. No. I think he would, yeah. He was a good pal. He was a good pal. So like that combination of imagery and modeledness, considering Gaucher was all about precision <laughs> and tidiness. What, what we do is we do try to um, edit later rather than beforehand, and that's, uh, that's a useful thing. So we're trying to find ways to create something that is exciting, uh, that is new, and nevertheless still has a, 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 a tie back with history. It's a bit impossible. You're trying to move forward while you're trying to move backwards. But it, I think it has to do with being respectful and has to do with being respectful to great contributors of art history. And as a consequence, you couldn't get anyone better than Gordon. I'm thinking I know an awful lot about art history, but this is somebody who knows uh, uh, perhaps uh, three times more than I do about it. So th there is a, a lot of uh, give, and, give and take and play, and uh, I've been the great beneficiary of it and I'm just really pleased with it. And it, it is, it's a, a great process that's used in other, all sorts of walks of life in terms of generating things, that not everything has to be a single individual person, that you know, collective uh, people can come together and get actually better things done. Even if you are not a student and you don't have a master or even doctorate in painting, which is another ridiculous thing, you should know like basic hundred most important artists of your time and he's definitely one of them. Throughout uh, my printmaking time, I always worked uh, intensely with a small number of people and I had uh, years long collaborations and that's what I started with Jeffrey. We just looked, the first things that we did were done in 2011, so it's like four years ago. And it went like, pff, it doesn't feel like we have been four years at it. We have a lot of kind of common uh, threads and main one is that we really deeply care about art in general and then especially about visual arts. And we both know a lot about it because most of the people that should really doesn't or don't care and would rather talk about something else. And we have been here talking uh, for Long time. How long are you here, Jeffrey? Since December. 
since December. And we have been talking about art, then a little bit about women, then about art, then a little bit about food, and then about more about art, and never a dull moment. And that's beautiful. And uh, I will miss him so badly now when he's going to go that uh, it is really heartbreaking, yeah. Many of the works, to my mind, and maybe I'm just reflecting on very specific works, uh, look like the art of the late 50s and early 60s. Abstract expressionist work of the second generation, Joan Mitchell, somebody I love so, you know, so much. Um, many of the works I'm going, God, that makes me really proud. That it looks like a Joan Mitchell painting. And others are like Riappel or Harold Town or any number of other artists who I admire immensely. And in a sense, it's by happenstance and by chance. It's not entirely happenstance because we caused it to occur, but we couldn't make the specific thing occur. The artist uh, Jeffrey Spaulding working with uh, printmaker Gordon Novak was, a, was a, an excellent combination. Uh, Gordon, uh, very well known for some of the artists that he's worked with over the years, uh, is uh, very much liked because he has a real in intuitive and, uh, and smart approach to uh, printmaking. He's not uh, a traditionalist in his, in his, uh, in his own work. He, uh, he recognizes the history of printmaking and uh, recognizes what's important about that history, but he also refreshes it with, uh, with his own approach. The idea that printmaking can become a uh, highly expressive and uh, creative process that does not need to be repetitive in a dogmatic sense, but can be open-ended and uh, as unique as, as the artist and the artist's touch. And so being able to work with, an art, with a printmaker like that, an artist like Jeffrey Spaulding, who's looking for a process of art making that will, that will result in uh, something new, something uh, uh, unique, and uh, a process that can only be creative, uh, uh, I think the, the combination of the two artists worked, uh, worked perfectly. And, uh, and I think the results really show it. I hope that when other people look at this, they will look at that with the same kind of love and affection that I feel for Morris Lewis or David Diao or any number of other outstanding, you know, even Frankenthaler. Uh, artist Jeffrey Spaulding is uh, is a significant figure in Canada. He's uh, uh, his art uh, practice is uh, uh, multiply dimensional, but completely linked to his uh, his practice as an artist and uh, making art for about 40 years and uh, having a reputation for some pretty significant things over the years. Uh, he also uh, had uh, some pretty significant accomplishments in other areas. He is a curator, he is an art writer, an art historian. Uh, uh, he uh, he uh, lectures, he's taught at universities, and uh, he's quite renowned as a curator for the collection work that he's been able to build in, in several of the art museums that, he's, uh, that he has worked in across the country. And uh, it's uh, really an outstanding career. I think what I would say is that my art is a love poem to art history. Um, uh, art saved me, you know, uh, rock music saved lots of people. <laughs> uh, art saved me from like a life of misery and irrelevance. But your intention is not dissimilar from the most lovely thought that I, I think I've had, I've seen about art. And that was by Philip Guston. Philip Guston in a video interview was asked what he was trying to do. And he just said, wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind if when I go there, wherever that is, that when I meet all those other people, that they just didn't say, not bad, Sonny. Right? And I think in many 
ridiculous ways. Uh, that's actually what all artists do, is that they attempt to make some offer to the gods of art history, to all the people who have inspired them and made their lives livable and lovable and, and perfect by trying to look at how wonderful they have made the world by what they've done and make some other thing. I'm a person and my, and my, um, my commitment has been to art and my whole life is art. And so I am a kind of curious position, some people think, but it actually is fairly consistent through history. Um, for the last 20 years, we've confused it by thinking that only those who are dedicated solely to one enterprise can be true. But I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit wider than that, but still very narrow. I'm still interested in visual art. And I am a passionate supporter and advocate of all aspects of visual art. So, yeah, I do that by pointing to other artists who I admire immensely, to other exhibitions I admire immensely and whatnot. And I do so by trying to make art that other people will admire. I think of it all as the same thing. Other people don't, necessarily, but um, I, uh, I believe fully that, that it's all part of the same process and I couldn't be the, the artist I am or the curator I am or the writer I am with all, all components of it. It's just my full, full being. I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that as you're looking at these things, you're finding them visually marvelous to look at. I am, uh, you know, that's part of our thing. But what I think is really interesting is that they're remnants, the remnants that we've reclaimed. And uh, they're beautiful to be reclaimed. And if you started to try and make something from scratch, you wouldn't necessarily make anything as elegant or beautiful. Uh, art Gallery of Swift Current is a is a small city art gallery in uh, southwest Saskatchewan, and we're we're part of a, a whole a number of uh, community galleries uh, across our province, and and like many galleries in throughout Western Canada, we serve our local communities, we serve uh, professional artists in uh, our provinces, and with that, uh, we are very comfortable in the local scene and the and the local example of uh, of art making and and what's going on. But when you look close, sometimes you do find uh, artists that are working on a world scale and world class processes, uh, even in uh, what are considered to be remote areas of, uh, of our country. And so it's a, it's a real pleasure to be, uh, to be working with uh, the artists uh, in this exhibition, uh, knowing that uh, I'm able to share you know, some world class uh, artwork uh, with the public. Gordon. Uh, for those of you who do not know in uh, this part of the world, uh, is um, highly renowned and very, very um, uh, insightful observer about art and has been for decades and has been somebody who has helped Canada and the world understand what really significant art that's been made in the world. And that's wherever he is. So that's intriguing. And it's particularly intriguing that he happens to be here in southern Saskatchewan. That's, that's incredible. Saskatchewan is an extraordinary place, just physically, but also historically and art historically. And wonderful things that have happened that connect to the world. And maybe a little bit surprising to many people, but outstanding things that have world impact occurred here. That's wonderful as a Canadian and as a person, and it's wonderful to be part of that process. So the evident thing is the Emma Lake workshops, Regina 5, there's so many other cool things. And uh, I'm an avid admirer of so much art. But 
coming here at this moment, trying to conjoin what I do, which is both representational art, romantic landscape art, and abstract art, um, is a wonderful opportunity and challenge and a real privilege. So it's been phenomenal to be in the company of great art and great people and try and find a way to conjoin with all that. These works are all about paying great love and affection to artists and people who've made great contributions to our world of art. And that's what it is. Both sides of this work are about just, I noticed, I cared, and thank you. Too often, certainly in Canada, not so much in the rest of the world, but certainly in Canada, we have a kind of preference for whatever is new, no matter what it is. And that's a good thing because like, there's not that many opportunities. So, you know, I'm all for helping new things uh, evolve. But I'm also for the, the, the point of the matter is that actually, if the Montreal Canadiens are the best team, they go to the Stanley Cup. Sorry. It doesn't matter if you've got a brand new team and they've never played before and they're really good people. I don't care. Who's the best team? Who are the most interesting, you know, players in hockey or visual art or whatever it is? And so where do I go as an art maker? This is where I'm still going back and going, I still think there's lots of value in things that we have left behind. And so an awful lot of what I'm doing in both my day job and my night job is salvage of trying to remember outstanding contributors to art history who did not get their due, who never were looked at, uh, even in their time properly, and art that I still believe has um, genuine, extraordinary, experiential and intellectual value that's overlooked. And I try to use through bo both my curatorial practice and my art to point towards it. And as a consequence, we have made with the ghosts and angels, which is the ghosts of art past, and the angels of printmaking, which is who knows why things work, right? So obviously angels intercede to make things actually work or not work. Uh, that we have created a number of new images that we hope um, are inspirational and exciting. And the interesting thing is that as we started, I actually didn't know exactly what it would look, uh, no, I, I didn't know at all what it would be look like. I just thought it would be an interesting idea. Well, I think this uh, approach to art making is uh, very timely in the world. There's, uh, there's a kind of a, uh, an interest and a, and a movement uh, in uh, finding a new and unusual processes uh, to, uh, to making art that uh, hasn't really been seen before. And of course, that's the nature of art making anyway, is to make something new and unique. And uh, so I think other galleries would like to present this work if they could, because it, it is such a kind of cutting edge uh, example of art making. It's noble. It's not exactly what makes the GDP work in the country, but actually, Sorry, boys and girls, it's the only thing that makes countries valuable. Sorry. When it's all done, the free trade deal will not matter to the civilization in the slightest. What will matter is, you know, Margaret Atwood, you know, Leonard Cohen, Tom Thompson, and other people who have sat quietly trying to make something happen and hope that it will reach across time to touch people. And so that's kind of what I hope the show will do. Lee Krasner is the other. Uh, with uh, Joan Mitchell and Grace Hardigan. This is uh, Hokusai Rauschenberg. <laughs> Yeah. Uh...
Motherwell Village. So for Robert Motherwell, great, great artist. This is another sentimental name, this is Joyce Wheeler. I'm 